Welcome now to talk of the nation. What we're going to talk about today is actually in relation to the poll question we had today. It is 40 years since Idi Amin left Uganda for exile. He finally died in Saudi Arabia in 2003 and his family continues to hope that he will be accorded national honors of some kind. However, what is intriguing is that 40 years ago, Idi Amin was vilified in every way possible with no one keen to say anything good about him. Today, the situation has improved and more people are willing to look more favorably on his time as president, occasionally rating him as more influential than, say, Milton Obote or even Yusuf Lule. To help us explain this turnaround in Idi Amin's legacy, we have Dr. Robert Ojambo, a political historian with Chambogo University. Welcome to our studios tonight. Yeah, thank you, Sandra. Yes. Good evening, viewers. Mm. Uh, we, we, we basically want to, to start. I'm sure you had our poll questions and responses today. And we can see that there's a shift in how people perceive the former president of Uganda. You as a historian, as someone that has studied deeply this uh, subject matter, do you think the perception of Idi Amin has changed? Yeah, it is true the perception has changed. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the changing does not mean that uh, people are creating new history, no. Mm. Uh, this is what it was supposed to be, but uh, at that time, there were a lot of things happening in Africa. Men came in at a time when dictatorship, dictatorship was at its peak. You find that the, the, the government of Uganda was not the only one being under a dictator. There were dictators all over Africa. Mm. Uh, maybe just to just give it a perspective, uh, when we started getting independence, starting with the Ghana in 1957, then went on in 1960s, a number of countries uh, started getting independence. Uh, there were revolutionaries, mainly depending on political parties and the uh, movements that uh, ushered in the likes of Milton Obote, ushered in the likes of Kwame Nkrumah and many other leaders in Africa. Unfortunately, these did not last long. Uh, within no time, uh, Nkrumah had been uh, overthrown by the army, mm -hmm. and this trend started happening in Africa. And Uganda in 1971, Idi Amin comes. Mm -hmm. uh, in some countries where coups did not take place, the revolutionaries also turned themselves into dictators. I'll give an example of Malawi mm -hmm. and Akamuzu Banda and uh, many other countries, but they also one party dictatorships in Tanzania, in Kenya, and many other African countries. So Amin comes uh, on when dictatorship is the order of the day. Mm. Unfortunately, Amin rejects the either to side with the capitalists. Remember, this was the time of the Cold War. Yes. And Amin was a positive, non-aligned leader. Mm -hmm. He decides to choose to go with the Arab League. And therefore, he, uh, the, all the media became very hostile mm -hmm. to him. Uh, uh, just to remind the viewers, Amin was a project of the British. The British thought that they would use him mm -hmm. to fight against uh, the, the, the socialist Obote with his uh, common man's charter mm -hmm. and later the fight against apartheid, which even led to a lot of uh, problems to him. Yeah. So Amin, uh, uh, when he becomes a leader, he does not conform to either the British mm -hmm. or Russia. So they start looking for a way of removing this guy. And therefore, the media and everybody becomes very hostile mm -hmm. with him. But the good thing with Amin, he was a darling of the people. So it is very difficult to fight him in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Remember, at that time, Obota had landed in Tanzania. And therefore, that was the only place where they were using to fight Amin, and which created a lot of problem and created hostility on him. Secondly, Amin was not able to form a very good system that would help him in form of a state. He used the army type command where he used the uh, generals as governors and very many other people. So people do not understand him. Mm. But uh, despite all this, Amin was, uh, uh, he, he, he loved the country. Mm. Uh, he felt well for Uganda and whatever he did was for the benefit of the people. In most cases, when you look at the economy, uh, the, uh, 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 I was just saying on the news bite when I was uh, coming in here that uh, uh, in 1972 he declares an economic war. And you have seen the economists themselves mm -hmm. analyzing him. 
Yes. And that was a big thing for Ugandans because before that time, the economy was being run by foreigners. Mm. So because of that, the people liked him, especially those who benefited from the common war. I mean, the economic war. Unfortunately, I mean, does not have a very good propaganda machinery mm. that could help him to popularize himself outside Uganda so in, in, and in, in, in Uganda. So in short term, the media was against him and the was media was saying against the right him, about him and the people who wrote about Amin wrote a script which was one-sided and okay. in fact that's a general problem with Ugandan history mm. Ugandan history writes a one-sided script mm. and the, for us who study history we have been blamed but you know sometimes in Africa the moment in time determines what is written mm. so I mean because of the Cold War politics because of the the rebellions that were taking place of course the rebellion was in Tanzania so I've had some people blame I mean for having attacked Tanzania mm. in 1979 I think any government would do that I don't think there was there is any government mm. which would learn that there are rebels organizing in your neighboring country and ju but he just didn't know how to do it mm. how to do it because of the uh, as I told you, he did not uh, rely so much on experts. He mm. relied so much on the army. And so because of that, he looks like he's ugly and he <laughs> has attacked Tanzania. So but any so leader would have attacked so Tanzania. So regardless of all that, that you're saying, why do you think that now the perception of Idi Amin has changed? Is it that the media is now tr painting a better picture? What exactly is the reason behind the uh, turnaround in the perception of uh, Idi Amin? I don't think that the media has uh, painted anything. These are facts that you can find if you dig up in the archives and talk to the mm. people. Uh, some of the things that uh, are said about Amin are real, mm. especially those which try to praise him. Yeah. Uh, for example, there is no doubt Amin tried to return the economy to Ugandans. Mm. The only problem he did not know how to do it, he was like uh, his colleague in Zimbabwe, Mugabe, who mm. wanted to return the land to the Africans in Zimbabwe, but he didn't know how to do it. Mm. Uh, secondly, Amin was a people person. Uh, mm. If you see the films and many things and you talk to many people, they will tell you that Amin, uh, everywhere he went, he, he related with the people. There is a way he connected with the people. Mm. Uh, then now for now, there are three major issues that have made people to start reflecting back and saying, no, there must have been a problem here. Number one is what Amin managed to do with all the problems that he had. You can imagine a leader in Africa where the whole world is almost against you, but you can still run an economy mm. for nine years. And that economy is running. Although with the difficulty, yes, we know, but he managed to do a number of things. Mm. Where, where we are seated here was constructed during Amin's time. The only airport we have in this country was constructed by Idi Amin. Uh, during Idi Amin, Mulago was a hospital to reckon with. In fact, it was uh, looked at as a hospital where even the head of state mm. would go for treatment. Today, when people look at Mulago, they say, what is this? Uh, you look, the infrastructure was good. Mm. Uh, Amin tried to, 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 to start up a, new, a, a number of things. For example, Amin is the one who started the Uganda Airlines. And you can see how people have been struggling mm. in 21st century. Uh, struggling ha to put up uh, an airline. I mean, managed to do that without a, a lot of halabaloo <laughs> the way we have had. Yes. And so many other things. So people tend to think that this man mm. loved this country. But above all, as uh, one of the poll, the poll said, uh, mm. people try to reflect back mm. and see what is being said about Amin. Mm. They try to see what is happening on the streets of Kampala in our politics and they don't see anything different. For example, uh, last year, uh, when you talk about state-inspired killings, a man was killed in Arua, shot on, uh, on, a, on a steering of, uh, of a car. We have never had anybody who has been taken to courts of law saying that this man is the one who shot Yasin and therefore he has been either been convicted mm. or is uh, due to be to being convicted. So such things remind people and they try to think that uh, after all Mr. there is Robert, nothing different. Uh, Mr. Robert, you mentioned something about infrastructure, like the different uh, things that Amin brought into the country or started in the country. Away from actually Amin, do you think the, to determine the success of a president, it is somehow related to the infrastructure development and also the relationship they have with the, 
with the different pillars of, of government, for instance, the judiciary. Do you think that sort of, because you mentioned of a man that was killed, and I would imagine there's a police involved, do you think all that determines uh, the success of a government? Yeah, Sandra, uh, uh, the, the legacy of a good leader does not only depend on uh, infrastructure or what he does, mm -hmm. but how he connects with the people and how people understand him or her. Uh, because of that, when you look at uh, Idi Amin, yes, he might have had horrendous things mm -hmm. towards the politicians, but to the local man, they looked at him as a person who did things meaning well for the country. For example, mm -hmm. if you are defending the country called Uganda, is it for your own sake or for the Ugandans in general? And uh, because of that, people looked at uh, Amini's things, the way he was doing things, mm -hmm. as a person who was protecting the common man, uh, the common people, and how he connected with the people in terms of sports, in terms of... Uh, 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 he okay. would be seen participating in terms of ceremonies. There is a way he connected with the people. Mm. Uh, uh, where and, and you talk about connecting with the people, and I want to ask you my very last question. Please do. What, do, what should people, or what should the current leadership, or what should presidents, what do they really have to learn from President Idi Amin's regime? Number one is the courage the man had. Mm. This was a very difficult time, Cold War, but he took a stand at which would protect his country. Mm. Number two, how people see you working for the country, mm. what we call nationalism. The man is seen to have been a nationalist, a patriot, mm. a, not side with any group, although he favored the Muslims. If you look at the, the rank and file, the Muslims mm. benefited so much, mm. and people from West Nile. But all these were doing. But the other thing is that uh, uh, when you look at Amini's regime, he's hated because of the brutality mm. which people think he was. Uh, I don't think there is any society which wants a brutal leader. Mm. And therefore, our current leaders should know that brutality is something that can cause you a lot of problems mm. and is something that can uh, tarnish your uh, regime however much you have constructed uh, the infrastructure and many other things of the economy, uh, uh, etc. Okay. Thank you so much, Robert, for coming to our studios tonight. And My pleasure. And giving us an insight on what you think about Idi Amin. My Thank pleasure. You. My pleasure. That's it in uh, Talk of the Nation, but I just want to say that despot, uh, despot or hero Amin remains one of the most presidents in Ugandan history that are still talked about and remembered. Thank you for joining us in tonight's Talk of the Nation. Keep it in TV.